So, um, okay, fellas. So our last subject of this uh, episode, and this is definitely a um, a serious one for uh, the black community, for our culture, um, and and just everything that we have been fighting for for. Oh man, forever really. But these these last couple of years, we've had so many different movements and et cetera arise from the police brutality against unarmed black people. And so this next subject is the Derek Chauvin trial. And Derek Chauvin is the police officer who murdered George Floyd on video, um, held his knee on his neck until George Floyd could not breathe anymore. Um, and this man was begging for his life, um, the entire incident. And it's just, I, I can't even watch any portion of the video. Like I can't, I can't stomach it. Um, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, to say the least, um, you know, justice needs to be served here. Um, but so the question is, the official question for this topic, now that the trial is in place and he is currently standing trial, is will justice be served? So um, I am going to throw this to Emmett to start us off, and then um, I will throw it to uh, PAT, and then I'll, I'll wrap it up. So Emmett, what say you, sir? All right. So do I think justice would be served? No. Um, and the reason I'm saying this is we've seen these stories go on and on again and again. And to those definitely, you know, I don't like to use the word black community, but those of those of our, you know, indigenous and black, you should definitely take the time to go research law. That should be your biggest, biggest thing because it will make you a more powerful person to know how this justice system works. Because even though he is an officer and he's officer of law, they're more on his side, you know? And the reason why I'm saying it is because, because of his occupation. Because at the end of the day, many people don't get and realize that behind every occupation, there is a person, you know? But we tend to see the job more than the person itself, you know? Everyone, you know, everyone saw what they saw with, you know, George Floyd. Everyone saw, you know, you know, what was been going on. I don't know. It took them, what, about a year to get this trial together? It took about a year to actually, like, you know, get some charges put together. You know? Now, now, when you talk about other people out here, you know, and people do a lot of heinous crimes, you know? Does it take that long for, you know, charges to come up? No, you know, because, you know, once they see what they see and, you know, once they already know what they're doing, they're already, you know, getting all the paperwork and everything like that, you know, if depending on the crime, big or small, you know, they already know what they're going to do already, you know? But it took a year to even get this man in court, you know? It took a year to come up with some charges, you know? It took a full year to get where, I would say where we're at, you know? It took a full year, you know? That itself should tell you how serious this case might be. This should tell you, you know, you know, there's gonna be a lot of injustice that's about to happen, because you know? I don't, I haven't seen anything change in this same system of what they call justice. Because in my mind, I still think it's always going to be injustice. Because yeah. nothing has changed. 
in this whole justice system. Nothing has changed, you know? Like, and, excuse me, mm, because we can look back all the other cases, you know, I don't even want to go back to like the Trayvon Martin one, but you can look back at other cases and you can see what many of the verdicts are and whatnot, you know? The one thing I think I was interested was, uh, I saw a piece of it, you know, something on um, online, but they showed, I think, was it George Floyd's, like, was it his girlfriend? That white lady who had the glasses and whatnot? Am I is that is that correct? Am I saying that correct? I'm not sure. I'm not because uh, I did see with... something like that, and they they they, you know, and I could be wrong, but that is what I saw. But um, they basically labeled her, you know, as Floyd's girlfriend, and, he, and you know, they called him, you know, all different types, like you know, he was a drunk, an addict, and things of that nature and whatnot, you know. But it's you know, it's very interesting. You know, who they supposedly say this is the man's like, you know, you know, um, girlfriend or whatnot. And I've seen that scenario happen every single time in court, you know, where there's a black brother, but yet he's dating a white woman and whatnot. So it's this whole parallel, you know, that black men only date white women, which is completely false. But I can't get with the program because it's still going to be the same thing at the end of the day. You know, I'm waiting at the end. So basically not to say like, you know, all, you know, I'm right because I knew, already knew what the verdict is, you know, I'm not putting my time and energy into something that I feel. And I know that the same system that's always been injustice has done nothing righteousness of justice and it and i don't think it's going to change you know because it's not our system and we keep trying to ask for justice in a system that we don't have much power and control of you know facts and that's the biggest thing at the end of the day mm -hmm. the biggest thing you know because we have no control it's hard to call these verdicts so, and it's very sick to see how a man supposedly on camera kills a man and whatnot, you know, it took a year to get where we're at, you know, to get him in court a year. This is a, this, the man was an officer, you know, so he has a badge number. They know who he is. They know his prank scene. Like they know everything they need to know about this man, you know? They could have had other people come and arrest this man to even start something. It took a full year to get where we're at. So all I'm saying is, don't be shocked about the verdict. You know, this should this should basically take us this time to go study law, so you guys can know what really goes on in those courtrooms. And I'm just ending it from there. Okay, thank you, sir. Mr. P.A.T., what say you, sir? Yeah, I mean, my, my thoughts pretty much align with, with E-Man. Um, as far as uh, the question, do we think justice will be served? My answer to that is no. Just, just a straight up no. It, it's not going to be served. Reason being is we don't live in a, in a society of justice. Mm -hmm. We live in a society, we live in a system of injustice. Mm -hmm. White supremacy, which is global, which is a global phenomena. It is, and we could, we're going to talk about here in the U.S., obviously, because that's where this thing is going on at. It, it's, it's built on injustice, injustice towards Black people. There is no justice for, for Black people. The system, as Eman said, stated already, it wasn't built for us. It wasn't designed for us. So will there be justice? No. I I, I mean if there is, if if the, the verdict comes out to be what it what it should be, and there there happens to be justice, great. We'll all be happy about it. Great. But to just to that that question in and of itself, I'm gonna just say. 
no, there, there won't be any justice. But in regards to the trial itself, I, I'll be honest, I haven't really kept up with the coverage of the trial too much. I've been reading some articles here and there. I personally just don't want to invest too much of my time and energy looking in on this trial. I mean, I'm, I'm going to peek in, you know, every mm-hmm. now and again, because I, I, I want to know what's going on. But right. at the same time, there's a part of me that just doesn't want to invest a lot of my energy into it because I, 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 I just think it's going to be one of those things where it, it could be a very big upset, a very big disappointment. And I want to I want to keep the faith. I'll just say that I, I want to keep the faith and hope for the best. So we all saw what we saw on May 25th, 2020. Derek Chauvin kneeled on George Floyd's neck for a total of eight minutes and 45 seconds. Some say up to nine minutes, but either way, we saw Derek Chauvin murder this man who was handcuffed and on the ground. George Floyd was begging for his life And we saw the way Derek Chauvin's face looked. It was the face of someone who clearly didn't give a fuck about the life that he was taking away in that moment. Absolutely. So with, with all of this in mind, it's clear that Chauvin needs to be punished to the fullest extent. One thing that I'm anxious about, obviously, is the verdict. And I, I think we, we are all anxious, but I say I'm anxious because there's a part of me that can see Chauvin getting some kind of light sentence, mm-hmm. whatever that sentence may be, if, you mm-hmm. know, it's going to be light, I, I think, hopefully not. But one thing we got to speak on, too, is how this white supremacist media, and I'm going to just call, call it what it is, the white supremacist media has been talking about George Floyd's past mm-hmm. really with drugs. Victim blaming. Right, mm-hmm. victim blaming. You know, they're talking about his past with drugs. That's all they do. That's all they do. Yeah, as, you know, as if that really matters. You it know, it seem like, you know, just black men take drugs. Like, everyone takes drugs who right. chooses to take drugs. So, ju- just like, you know, it's just like what the media did with Trayvon Martin and Freddie Gray and countless other um, black victims. They're, they they pull up the past of the victim. I mean, the thing is, we we know why they do this. It, it's a way to get the public, the general public, to view the victims in a negative light and to make excuses for why them being murdered wasn't so bad. When it comes to Black people who are victims, we still have to be the ones who are guilty of something. And we're still the ones who have to be put on trial even if we're not a, even if we're not alive to defend ourselves, even in our death, we are still guilty and we're still put on trial. This is how sick, twisted, and evil the white supremacist establishment media is. They do that in order to inform or really disinform the public's collective mind. In order to get the masses on board with with an idea, the mainstream media has to manufacture consent. In other words, propaganda is used in order to sway the public into being agreeable and accepting of whatever the agenda is at play. Now, the term term manufacturing consent is actually the title of a book written by Noam Chomsky. Hope I pronounce his name correctly, Noam Chomsky. I actually have that book, by the way. But um, yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. I want to give credit where credit is due. So Manufacturing Consent by Noam Noam Chomsky. But going back to George Floyd's past with drugs, it's, it's, uh, it's obvious that bringing up his drug usage is a way to gaslight everyone. Basically, basically, the powers that be are telling people that they didn't see what they saw. They're basically like, well, you think you saw Derek Chauvin kneel on George Floyd's neck for almost nine minutes, but no, that's not what you saw on that video. It was just 
George Floyd's bad health that killed him instead. So just ignore what you witnessed with your own two eyes and listen to what we say. Just ignore what you saw and listen to what we say instead. You know, it's one of those things where they're they're like, you don't need to think. Just let us do the thinking for you. I agree. That's pretty much what's going on. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, just to sum it up, because I don't have a whole spiel on this or a whole much, lot more to say, but I'm going to just say that I think this trial is just, it's it's unnerving. And it, it I think it's unnerving for a lot of people out there in the Matrix, at least the, the people who are sane and function like civilized human beings. I mean, the thing is, we know what we saw on that video and we know that the punishment needs to fit the crime. Even though we know that we live in a system of injustice towards black people, there needs to be actual justice. Straight up, there there just needs to be justice. So I I understand that the system is gonna do what it's gonna do. The system is gonna do what it's designed to do at the end of the day, but it it needs to do something different. I'm gonna just put it like that. Do you Flat know out. anything about that 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 last year that black runner and whatnot who supposedly got killed by that white dude because he was jogging and whatnot? Y'all remember that story? What well, what who um I forget um, I, I forget the Are you name. talking about Ahmaud that Maude Arbery? Yeah, that one right there. Mm-hmm. I don't think he got justice. Yeah, I don't I'm really not, do. Yeah, I don't think no, so. I'm not sure that they. I want to say that the two men in the Ahmad Arbery case were arrested and that they are in jail, but I don't know that their trials have actually occurred yet. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. so. Yeah. Um. So this is going to be very simple for me. Um, Will justice be served in this case? Um, I will say that I don't think that there is any level of appropriate justice that we can expect to receive in this case. Because that man kneeled on George Floyd's neck without flinching while being videotaped and has now actually had the audacity, his defense team anyway, to make the argument that it was his drug use as opposed to the clear cut asphyxiation due to the pressure applied to his neck. I understand that defense attorneys have a responsibility to defend their clients to the best of their abilities. I get it. But that's exactly why, because I don't know if you fellas know, but when I was younger, I always wanted to be a lawyer. Um, And my reasons, yeah, my reasons were different. I think you'd be a good one. (laughs) Thank you. I ain't gonna lie. I, I agree too. I definitely agree on that too. Thank you. Thank you. I very much appreciate that. Yeah. But, you know, what's interesting is that my reasons for wanting to be a lawyer when I was younger is because I had known so many people, including a close family member of mine who did not get justice as a black person. And so I said I wanted to be a lawyer because I wanted to be someone who gave black people a fair shot. That was that was my reason for wanting to be a lawyer, right? And I, I, when I, I definitely looked, want you to be my lawyer, though. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, when I look at this case, as Pat mentioned earlier, the victim blaming is strategic, right? It's strategic and it's racist. It's strategic because you introduce any known factor of corruption and you've already played somebody in the jury's mind about whether or not this person had this coming. 
Mm-hmm. Because juries do not tend to look at it from the perspective of the law says that regardless of what the crime was that the the victim committed, that it is the law that are supposed to punish them for. That is true. And so when you think about the fact that they are now introducing an element like his drug use or his criminal past, that creates that little cluster of doubt about how extreme the punishment should be because, oh, after all, this was not a really good person. Maybe he deserved what he had coming to him and et cetera. So first of all, when you look at the entire situation, he was being questioned initially about um, false currency. The the claim that was made, the reason that they called the cops was because they thought he was using a counterfeit 20 to make a purchase. The fucking 20 wasn't even counterfeit. First of all, okay, right. Second of all, so that in itself, who makes counterfeit twenties? Right, exactly. Oh, they're gonna make counterfeits of a hundred. But counterfeits of twenties. But the point is that they were racially profiling. You're correct, Emmy. But they were racially profiling him from the on start of the incident. Right. He here's a black man. Like, why would you assume unless that same clerk? called the police on some other people who used 20s that day, especially since the 20 turned out to be real. Think about this. Okay. That is ridiculous. That was racial profiling if there ever was a clear case of it. And even if the 20 wasn't real, right? He didn't do any appropriate testing to my understanding for that. So what made him escalate that to calling the police? I'm referring to the person that made the call. This entire situation from the very beginning screams injustice. And then there are rumors that Derek Chauvin knew George Floyd before this incident. That they Actually, I heard about in, that too. That, that's yeah, the that I they worked heard. in the same establishment. Yeah, I heard about that. Even, right, exactly. And even though they may not have been like close pals or anything like that, they had some kind of previous interaction. Who's not to say that this wasn't revenge? I mean, at the that's end the of the day. one thing I thought about too. I thought yeah. it really had to do with some type of revenge because I was like, you know. Okay. Yeah, he mm-hmm. they've had they've met previously. I mean, this entire thing is a ridiculous situation from the aspect of, you know, the victim blaming. I mean, which is common whenever unarmed black people are killed, right? Like That's they start true. bringing up, they start bringing up all of their past. They couldn't do that for, you know, young Tamir Rice. Right. Who who didn't have a pass. He was just a little boy playing with a toy gun in the park. Right. But because he was black, he was seen as a threat and lost his life. They couldn't do that in those particular cases. Right. And even still, no one was brought to justice. So if you ask me, will justice be served? There's no capacity in which justice could be served for this incident. No one had to die that day. And especially not someone who was accused of using a counterfeit $20 fucking bill. And especially when that person was saying to the police. And and this is the other thing. People are always saying blue lives matter too. Not all cops are bad. But when you see a police officer derelicting their duty to the point that it causes someone else's life and you didn't arrest that officer, you're just as bad. That's the, entire, that's, the, that's the problem with, yep. the, with the police force, right? They're a gang. And I'm sorry, I'm not saying that all cops are out to kill all black people and et cetera. That is actually I'm not true, by the that way. At all. But when you're a police officer, you swore duty to protect and serve your constituents. Your constituents means everyone, even against other cops that you see doing wrong. So that's my problem with this situation. If justice, the only way justice could truly be served, if it, A, it wasn't just Derek Chauvin on trial, those other officers who were there and watched him place his knee on that man's neck, heard the victim saying he couldn't breathe and didn't stop their fellow officer from continuing with that illegal ass move, they're guilty too. And actually, and some of them were, 
I'm okay. sorry, I didn't mean to cut no, you off ahead. real mm -hmm. quick. I was just saying some of them were actually holding George Floyd down also. Mm -hmm. They were mm -hmm. behind that. Um, yeah, they were the car, holding. Yeah, so I mean, I saw every angle. Yeah, because when, when it happened, yep. yeah, when it happened, I was really researching this thing a lot to the point where like I became like a very lazy bum on my couch. So they were like, all a part of it. All so of them. It, it just seemed people got different angles. I got different camera angles. I got Mm -hmm. I, I saw I saw time footage before, after, right. What happened afterwards? Before right. they got there, after they got there, how they were falling floor. Like I was like, yo, but mm -hmm. supposedly, like you know, the storefront, you know, had all this footage, but yet it, it didn't come out until like months afterwards after this thing happened. And I'm like, and there was also footage from witnesses. I mean, the reality of it is like this is a clear cut case, right? This is a clear cut case of at minimum, at absolute minimum, this police officer also, again, committed involuntary manslaughter. If you say if you say he didn't intend to kill him, he was just trying to he was just trying to um, to, you know, keep the situation at a certain level. Let's say you made that argument. OK, it's still involuntary manslaughter because he criminally placed that hold on someone. That's not a hold that they're, they're not even the police are not supposed to do anything with anyone's neck for multiple reasons. And so the, and, and the, if memory serves me correctly, and I have researched this and saw many articles about it, the police chief himself says that Chauvin's actions were not proper. In fact, it's right here. The Minneapolis police chief says Derek Chauvin's actions were in no way, shape or form proper. Yeah, I read that. The too. police chief. Well, he, so in, in my opinion, justice is not going to be served to answer the question and sum things up. Justice is not going to be served because there's no way for it to be served properly. And there is never going to be in this particular case, the accountability that needs to occur. And that jury, and, and it's all going to be dependent on the jury, right, have already been provided these little tidbits about this past, uh, about George Floyd's past to help sway them for recognizing that at the end of the day, he was a human being who deserved to face his adjustments, his, or his, excuse me, his judgments through the justice systems, not at the knees of Derek Chauvin. And for that alone, he is guilty and all those other cops that let this incident happen are guilty. So Absolutely. when you look at, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you go on PAT. I only have one quick thing to say. Oh, I'm good. When you <laughs> look at, when you look at, you know, accountability, you know, you know, you gotta make sure if you did it, you did it, you know, but knowing when you look at the case, you know, they're denying something they didn't do. Yet people saw it, you know, that's that's the silly game that is very sick. You know, and that's the issues that, you know, that keeps coming up and it, it's not going to get better because I don't I can say what I want to say, but literally they're sitting here denying what everyone said that like everyone saw i apologize everyone saw mm. you know like everyone saw it but you're denying that it didn't happen how in the hell can you do something like that you know it don't it don't even it don't even it shouldn't even make sense things ain't making sense no more you know they're making it seem like you know well, you saw this, but nah, it didn't happen that way. It happened like this, and it should have happened like this. They're, they're yeah. gaslighting, bro. I mean, that, that's pretty much what's going on. They're, they're just gaslighting the public. You know, the media is in the position where they, you know, they want to think for you. They, I mean, they, they, they don't want you to think for yourself, pretty much. Mm -hmm. It's like they want to just be the one to tell you what to think and what to think about. You know, they want to guide your thoughts. They want to um, they, they want to tell you how to think. So, that of course, they're going to come in and they're going to be like, oh, well, yeah, you you saw the video. But no, that, you, you sure you saw that? Are, are you sure? Like maybe you saw it this way. Maybe you saw it that way. And, and, you know, they play on that and they, they're going to do it over and over because they they feel that they have that power. And like I said, this is how evil, sick and twisted and demented 
this system is. It is just, it's really that fucking sick and disgusting because they will go to those lengths. You know, they do that all the time. They will go, that's the lengths that they will go to in order to guide the masses thought. You know, they'll they'll go to those lengths where they'll say, well, you know, you saw the video, but you, I, I don't think you saw what you saw. Here's what you really saw. You know, that's pretty much what's at play here. It's just sick, like. If, if this, this is this is we this is the main reason why I keep to myself. This is the main reason why I keep to myself. This is the main reason why you know, you know, I let people, not even in my circle, but just I only allow certain people around me, you know, because it's just it's just so sick and just it, we want things to make sense. You know, it has to make sense. You know, we can't be doing shit that don't make sense. Because if it don't make sense, why are you doing it in the first place? You know, you know? like people don't have a reason when they when, like certain things they do, you know, and that's like a huge issue. You know, but for 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 people to put a case out a year later knowing the jury is going to call the case and whatnot, because they're going to definitely vote on it, guilty or not guilty. But to say this man did not do it is by far the most sickest thing in the world. And and people should see that. That's the outrage that I want people to see. But people no one's not outraged. They step out of their comfort zones, and, and they that's, don't. That, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you're good. You're good. But that's the thing. Everyone wants to keep living in this box. Get the fuck out the box. The thing is, they 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 know what's going on, right? Like I don't I don't even I don't accept, nor do I allow the bullshit notion uh, or or to allow myself to participate in the conversation of racism is not as bad as it used to be, or racism is over. Whenever anyone says that to me, black, white, Spanish, or otherwise, I don't even continue to engage with the conversation because at that point, you are showing me that you are not a. a uh, you're not, uh, I don't want to say foe, because it's not that these people are are my enemies, but you're not someone that I can have this conversation with on an appropriate level, because you and I aren't thinking on the same level. Right. Whenever you're, we're, we're, we're in two different worlds. You're in a world where you're purposely keeping yourself in the shadows and in the box, and I'm in a world where I'm going to call you out on your shitty box. It's that simple. And the reality of it is, in this particular case, and in this particular incident, we watched, we watched a murder occur. And instead of the appropriate actions being taken, which was Derek Chauvin being charged for murder quickly, not some some months later, those officers who sat there and helped him and assisted or did not arrest him after the incident should have been brought up on charges. The jury being fed the incidents about his um, about George Floyd's past. George Floyd is not on trial here. Derek Chauvin is on trial here. Yep. And, and the reality, that shouldn't have even been admissible information. The judge should have dismissed the ability for the defense to present any evidence whatsoever about George Floyd's past. That's not who's on trial. And, 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 it, it, and the fact of the matter is, I do not see how justice can be served, even if Chauvin gets a sentence of prison time. Justice still won't be served because all the appropriate parties who contributed to his death are not going to face justice. And I'll tell you this, what the world needs to be aware of is how the Black community, quote unquote, is going to act if that, that jury comes back not guilty. First well, yeah, of all, Minnesota's going to explode. We'll we'll see because you know, well, like I told everybody, I'll see because I'm gonna tell you about this. Yo, my result after this thing is over, when they say not guilty, everybody gonna go back in their corner and just do the oh, same there'll thing. There'll be some them. uproar though. There'll, nah, be, there'll definitely be there'll some be uproar. Some I, protesting I, I, when, when when I talk, when I tell everybody, when I talk, when I want to see uproar. I want to see like the LA riots and whatnot. That's the type of uproar I need to see. 
you know, then I know we out here, we being real for true. That's when I know we, but now we back on our shit. But I mean, we, we still got to we still got to approach this carefully and strategically. Mm-hmm. Um, Agree. We don't want to do anything that's going to jeopardize us as a community. Agree. You know, so we as best as we can, we got to be as strategic and level headed as, as possible, even though this is a situation that where it's hard and, you know, exactly. emotionally go, so. definitely can go high. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's definitely one of those things where if if that verdict comes up foul, it, it, it's go, it's gonna be a problem. I'm waiting. Yeah, agree. I'm waiting. Agree. I'm, I'm sorry about. I'm waiting. Exactly. You know, I'm waiting. You know, I, exactly right. Th- none of this. This system will never. Because I told people I don't live in a box anymore. But this system has never. It. It. I feel like this system will never change. Whether whether you anybody can say it, like it or not, you know, I feel like it's never going to change. Because there's I'm one hopeful. thing. I will say I'm hopeful. Not that I. I. I'm going to, you know, invest per se that it is going to change. Like I'm not saying it's definitely going to change. But again, we have come some way. Right. Because, you know, in 1940s, their children wouldn't have even been arrested. Right. That's this. true. Right. So we we have to consider that we have come definitely away from where things were 50, 60 years ago for our ancestors to face. Right. right. But I, and, and I'm hopeful that things will continue to improve. But do I think we're close to justice being 100 percent equivalent? Absolutely not. Yeah. No. Nope. Well, just by going on that notion. But, you know, the I would say the biggest thing that bothers me a lot is the whole redlining thing. You know how basically how communities split and whatnot. And. And this is this is not me going on a tangent. This is just me, you know, just ending my thoughts of saying is like, if they can't even get redlining where we can all respectfully live equally, you know, you know, I can't look in towards, I can't look and see and feel hopeful, you know, about how a justice system that still is injustice, you know, because that is true, you know, he wouldn't have gotten you know, he wouldn't have gotten, you know, like, you know, he wouldn't have gotten on trial and whatnot. And even if he did go back on trial, if he does, they'll, he would still get a non-guilty verdict and still go back to his job and whatnot, you know. Now they're allowing people to, get, you know, come on trial and everything, you know, and we still get those non-guilty, you know, verdicts. But, you know. I'm just waiting to see because, you know, I got the popcorn ready and I'm ready to see what's about to go down. That's, that's all I got left to say. Yeah. And real, real quick, real quick before mm-hmm. we go. Um, so to, to E-Man's point where, um, you know, he was saying that things, you know, things just don't make sense. Things, you know, basically things not making sense, unfortunately. And I agree. I mean, a lot of things just don't make any sense. But unfortunately, we we live in a in a society. We live in a world where there's a power structure and a dominant society. I'll just frame it like that. That is invested in a certain type of status quo. That status quo is racism, white supremacy. So when when you have a power structure and a dominant society that's invested in in that status quo, it, a lot of things are just not going to make sense because the things that don't make sense is going to be in the power structure and the dominant society's favor. So they and I'm, I'm speaking about the dominant society, they're not going to want to invest any type of energy, any time and energy into even trying to make things make sense. Because nonsense is what basically allows them to, to, to move a certain way and to, to move up certain ranks or certain levels or whatever within society. It allows the status quo to be what it is it allows the status quo to benefit them. So 
once that status quo is benefiting them, yeah, they, they might see some things is wrong or they're going to see some injustices or, or, or whatever the case may be, but they're not going to put that time and energy into challenging the, the status quo and, and trying to change it to actually make it make sense. That's, that's not, unfortunately, that's something that's just not going to happen. So it, it's just going to take something else or someone else or us as a people to make it make sense. That's really what it all boils down to because we, we can't depend on, on them to make it make sense. They're going to keep up with the, with the nonsense and things not making sense. We, we are going to have to take it upon ourselves to make it make sense. That's really when things will change and change for the better. And when we will have a system of justice. So Absolutely. that's Absolutely. That. Well said, well said, Pat. I think, uh, Andy, man, I, I definitely agree with both of you all's points. I think in this particular case, um, you know, we're all hoping for the right thing to be done. But unfortunately, we have, as a community, have had to accept, um, you know, to expect anything because this could go either way. Right. It could go that, you know, justice to a certain extent is going to be served and this man gets the time he deserves for taking George Floyd's life. Or it could go that that jury finds him not guilty, which honestly and unfortunately um, is my point, is not something that our community would be too shocked by at this point because of how long we've dealt with such an unjust justice system. So. Let's hope for the best. We will, you know, follow back up on this subject, possibly after the verdict, of course. 